Hello, and welcome to Point, Counterpoint, Counterpoint, a production of the Lion newspaper and Lions Township Television. I'm Lars Lonroth, and today, great inflation. We love, we as students love test retakes, curves, and extra credit. But is it really good for education in general? Today, we have three reporters and editors from the Lion newspaper, Diane Malkovich, is that right? Diane Makovic. Makovic, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> We have Hayden Clausen, the sports um, editor at the Line newspaper, yeah. and Olivia Jonick, the um, reporter at the Line newspaper. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for Thank having you. us, Lars. So let's just delve right into it. Do you guys think that grade inflation or grade adjustments are making students' grades more representative of their knowledge or less? All right. Uh, I can start off with this one. I well, obviously, if you have extra credit or an extra credit assignment that adds points into the grade book and it makes someone's grade higher, then it won't represent what, or it won't represent exactly what they may have needed to earn in that class. But when that being said, sometimes you'll have a test and someone might need a test retake. Because they, well, if they missed a few days of school and they just had a bad unit, uh, should that student be penalized for missing those days of school and if they just had a bad test? So uh, it depends on what type of extra credit you're giving out. So like test retakes, I think, are great, as in they help. Or I just think test retakes are great, but sometimes like the smaller, more, I don't want to say petty extra credit assignments, like the small points ones, I don't think they, I think those ones are as great. So there's a distinction between extra credit that actually helps you become better at the topic. Exactly. And just pure busy work that is the teacher wanting you to do something. Exactly. So like, uh, I, I mentioned test retakes before. I think test retakes are great because like, eat, as I said before, if you ha just have like a bad test, or you weren't there for a week, but let's say you took a test on a subject matter that you just, you didn't understand. Like, we, we've all been there, where we just take a test and we walk out of there, like, wanting to just sob, and we're like, wow, I did not understand that at all. Well, like, with test retakes, I think that they're great, because if you don't understand the topic, you get another chance to relearn it, because you get that test back that you got, like, a, I don't know, like, 47 on, and you can go through all the problems and do them again so that you understand what you did wrong. And then you can take the tests again. And then, like, when you take the tests again, it gives you extra practice and extra just understanding of the material. And Diane, in your article, you expressed a lot of those very similar sentiments, that retates kind of incentivize people to actually master the subject matter. Yes, and I agree with Hayden because especially in AP classes, but in every class in general, retakes are very beneficial because they make sure that you actually understand the unit. And for an AP test or even for finals, you, it's a cumulative review. So you need to understand every unit. And even subjects like your math class, each unit builds off of the previous unit. So if you don't understand one unit, it's going to hurt you all down the road. So then retakes allow for you to correct the problem at its source so it doesn't grow into a bigger problem. It's forcing you to learn what you need to yes. learn, basically. And so why do you think that it's so, mu it's so much more important in AP classes? Because when you get to the exam date, you're going to need all that information. Yes. Um, well, you do need all the information because if you don't understand one unit, that can be the difference between a 5 or a 4 or a 4 and a 3. Yeah. And then that is very important for when you need college credit. But it's also very important just to make sure that you actually know the topic. And then when you leave the class, you can say, OK, I actually understood this. I didn't just fake my way through it. Olivia, what's been kind of your personal experience with um, test retakes, curves, extra credit? What has been what your thoughts and feelings about it as you've been a student here at LT? Well, as any student at LT, I like extra credit. I take advantage of it for the most part. but there has to be kind of a question, what am I getting out of this besides a higher grade? Is there anything worth 
going out and I don't know going to that exhibit at the museum or going to a play if it's not just to make my 88 and 89 and I feel like there are a lot of teachers at LT who just give us like as Hayden mentioned earlier busy work for extra credit that really doesn't help us do anything but only gives us better grades that we don't learn from. And so that kind of opens the discussion up to this broader thing about when do attempts to make grades more representative of one's skills, like curves, for instance, or test retakes, cross that line of going from helping you better understand to just being a way to boost a person's grade. In, mm -hmm. in your guys' thoughts, what is that line? So for me, uh, in my opinion, that line is when you take something that is entirely out of the subject material that you're learning. So like uh, a great example that Olivia said was that trip to the museum. If you have a teacher that makes you go to a trip to the museum to, uh, I don't know, let's just say, or when I took AP Euro, we had an extra credit assignment where we went to the Museum of Science and Industry. Or, oh my. The Art Don't Institute. <laughs> no, uh, but, it. <laughs> uh, so we went to the Art Institute and we had to write a one page essay on some European, of any piece of European art that was there. And I, yeah, I thought it was cool being able to go to the Art Institute and being able to understand art more. But in general, it didn't, I don't feel it helped me in the class because uh, I would have rather had my teacher take time and give us an assignment about just art in general so that we could better understand art as opposed to putting it all in our hands, saying, you can do this if you want, and for incentive, I'll throw in some points. So if sometimes I think it'd just be, uh, I think it'd just be better for everyone if they made some things that are kind of outside material, if they made it a bigger part of the course, if that makes any sense. Yeah, so it, making sure that the things that are being assigned actually bear this fruit of yeah. your labor, that and, it helps you. And don't you get, get me wrong, when I went to the um, Art Institute, I keep wanting to say Museum of Science and <laughs> Industry, I don't know why, it's, it's nothing to do with uh, AP Euro, <laughs> but when I went there, uh, yeah, it did help me understand like European art more, and it helped me understand why people make European art. But at the same time, it didn't really at that time have anything to do with what we were learning. Like at that, I said at that time like four times, <laughs> uh, like during that unit. So it, it's just kind of a weird thing where some teachers, I, I think they should do a better job at making sure that if they do give extra credit, it's to actually enrich your learning. Um, I agree, but I also disagree with that because I feel like most of the time, in my experience at least, extra credit has been mostly a hands-on project that you have to take into your own hands. And I think it helps to benefit certain students because some students do learn better with hands-on approaches and trying to figure things out themselves like a puzzle. So then I think this can help appeal to all types of students. For example, in physics, we have the extra credit project where you go to the Oak Brook Terrace and you have to ride the elevator to find the acceleration. And yes, in our last unit with forces, we did learn about acceleration and how to find it. But um, this is, helps to solidify that information by providing a hands-on experience that you can connect to. It's not just, here's a worksheet, you yes. do it. You actually see the actual implications in real life. Yes. And so, What's your thought on that? Do you think that like... Well, uh, I actually, I was a big fan of the Physics Elevator Extra Credit project because it did help you, because it was, it was basically like a lab that you could do outside of class. Because like you can't do a lab like that at LT because we don't have a big <laughs> enough elevator here. But one, but if I was a physics teacher, I think it'd be really cool to have a lab like that where you can see uh, how normal force different, differs from force of gravity and how you can use that to find the height of a building, which is really cool. But like, um, 
having that extra credit opportunity, that that's an example of one that I actually liked. And that kind of ties back to where you started from saying, where's that line of when it's just busy work as opposed to actually enriching your learning. So uh, I don't know where that line exactly is. I couldn't tell you like everything on this side of the line is this and everything on this side of the line is that. I think it's one of those things where you just, you know it when you see it. Yeah. That makes any sense. Yeah. And so one of the things that I think you and you, and I think probably you too, Olivia, touched on is curving tests oh. and quizzes. So Diane, do you mind talking about that? Oh, yes. So I think curving is very beneficial to students because especially when you get up to higher level classes, but again, across the board in all high school classes, there are teachers, most of the time, teachers' tests between classes differ. So if you have one physics teacher, it'll differ from another physics teacher's test. And now I know some teachers do consolidate and try to have the same test across the board, but especially at the lower levels, the tests can differ between classes. So this helps to create like a standardization almost between classes to make sure that the tests are fair. And if a teacher's question on one test was wor worded strangely, then that can help to correct because it wasn't necessarily that the student doesn't understand the topic. It can be the wording of the problem was made difficult in a way that none of the students could understand. There are times when the problem isn't on the students, yes. but rather on the test itself. Yes. And so you see a lot of this as being this rightful adjustment, showing that, hey, teachers make mistakes too, and this is a way to kind of provide that standardization and that correction, right? Yes. Have you, have you seen that happen a lot where? Um, well, yes, in going back to physics again, because yeah. I think we can all agree that physics provides a lot of curves and extra credit opportunities, but the curves in that class help to, the curves in physics are added to the most missed problem or the hardest problems on the test, so that it can help to it's almost as a reward and also a cushion at the same time, where if you do understand the topic, it'll help you on your test score in the long okay. run. But Hayden, you come from a very, very different perspective. Yeah, so you, you, you expressed a lot of... Uh, yeah, dis so... Have you don't like curves. No, don't get me wrong. <laughs> as a student, I love curves. I love getting a grade <laughs> higher than what I actually deserved on a test. But... <laughs> from the standpoint of just the, sorry, uh, but from like, just, it, it doesn't actually make that much sense. Because as you said, sometimes teachers have like different tests and it kind of standardizes it. But on the flip side of that, you could have two teachers with the same test who also curve differently. I know last year in A-Push, that was something that I remember having conversations with my friends about how their teachers would curve the test differently than like my teachers and how even though we like took the same test it wasn't fair to people in other classes uh, if you like got a different score and like a lot of teachers they curve based on uh, how the whole test performs or how their whole class performs so if you have kids in your class who are smarter than kids in the other class, is it fair that the kids in the other class get a m more points on the test than your class? So, well, I mean, you, you can answer that question, but it's just kind of rhetorical. But, like, also, uh, in terms of, like, a national scale, like, if you have a class that curves a lot of tests, at one school and then another school they're just they're not about that they're not about curving tests um, that can create a huge like GPA gap between two schools that teach the same subject and we'll definitely be coming back to that topic a little bit mm -hmm. later in this session right now but Diane so what do you what do you, what do you take into account in that argument that Hayden just provided I think that is a very valid point but it also comes down to where we go back to teachers do make mistakes, like you're not always going to have two teachers that are the same. Again, two teachers' tests can be different, two teachers' tests can be the same, but then that also comes down to the, I think that certain teachers, 
if teachers don't curve, then they might give more cushion assignments and homework, or they might give more extra credit assignments. So most of the time it comes down to almost about the same in terms of the amount of points in the grade book, mm -hmm. because one teacher who does curve tests a lot might give less homework points. Like in my A push class, we do not get very many homework points. It's about two annotation checks per semester, but then we do get the curves. So then another teacher might curve a lot and then not have homework, or a teacher might not curve at all and give more homework points to help cushion your grade. So it's these trade-offs. Yes. There's going to be cushions in your grade somehow. Yes. Teachers are just going to do that. So it's figuring out which ones are more acceptable in certain yes. situations. And so what do you think, Hayden? Do you think, like, you, you mentioned that, like, you personally think that curves just kind of create this illusion of people doing well instead of... Yeah. Um, well... Uh, I'm in Physics C right now, and we get a lot of curves on tests. And on our last test, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm a big fan of this, but our last test had about a 19-point curve. So you can have kids who get a 75 on the test who, with their curve, almost get 100. And then they're, like, at the same time, they cap off how many points you can get with the curve. So there are kids who get like a perfect score on the test and kids who get like, who, who will get like less points than them, they'll get the same grade because of the curve and because of that cap. And that's, that just doesn't seem super fair. And I know uh, you could just chalk what I set up to just the cap and the curve, but it, that also kind of goes back to the whole um, curves aren't standardized. Every teacher curves differently. So, um, yeah, that's just kind so of... So there's a lot of it. other variables there yes. that are, that may not actually be adding to fairness in yes. grading, grading. Yeah. And so, Olivia, we've kind of kept you out of the conversation quite a bit, unfortunately, because you didn't really talk about what you find acceptable or what you think is like the best time to use curves or extra credit. You kind of took a broader approach and talked about how that it that a lot of these grade inflation tools like curves and extra credit are creating an education system that overall is more unfair. Can you talk about that? Well, if you look at the um, grades from the past two decades, SAT scores are dropping, but GPAs are raising. and Researchers have um, blamed that on grade inflation because, like Hayden said earlier, you can have classes that are the exact same in AP Physics class, which is regulated by the college board across the country, but because of curves, students who take the same class, put in the same amount of effort, can have completely different grades. And it becomes unfair when they're applying to college. And studies have found that Grade inflation happens mainly at private schools and schools in wealthier neighborhoods. And so it's adding these layers of inequity in yeah. grading and the number of opportunities that students at low income communities get to boost their grade may not be equal to what is in a community like LT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so like, what's your guys' thoughts on that? Like, well. Uh, obviously, in the United States, there is a lot of talk about the um, about the education gap in terms of um, um, in terms of low income. Yeah, income. Oh my! I'm sorry. No, it's I'm totally sorry, fine. Viewers. Uh, <laughs> but like, they talk about how there's this gap in income and that causes a gap in education. And I think that that's a big problem. And kind of, and having kids who won't get as good of a GPA in lower income communities, um, if they apply for college and they get, and they apply for financial aid, they might not be able to get as much financial aid if they do have a lower GPA because their school doesn't have the opportunity to have their test scores curved or to get extra credit for this. And so that's an aspect that I'm not gonna lie, I didn't even think of when I walked in here, but 
it's really interesting that you bring that up because we do all the time talk about this education gap in America and that's just something else that comes with it. And so I think that like, I think at the crux of this conversation, the real question is what should grades mean? Is it about the student's mastery of the work? Is it about their hard work? Is it about one's ability to learn? So, and so I want to kind I'm of sorry, ask you guys that. What do you guys, what do you think is what grades should really, at the end of the day, represent? I think um, it's a combination of the three. I think you have to take into account mastery of the topic, ability to learn information, and your hard work, because they all kind of go hand in hand as a overall reflection of your entire semesters of learning. Because if you only look at the mastery of the topic, you might ignore the, extra, the hard work they put into learning the extra credit assignment, or all the time they spent working on any project, and you might just say, well, they got a B, they didn't understand this topic. But in reality, they might have worked the whole semester on trying to master this topic. So I think you have to take into account everything in looking at your grade. So it's a level of compassion and also a level of standardization yes. there. So I personally said that grades should represent your mastery of a subject matter because you can have kids who are just naturally really good at math. And I, I know a lot of kids who are like that, who can walk into a math class and just listen to the teacher talk about it for 48 minutes and not do homework and be able to still drop A's on all the tests. And so, uh, and that's just their way of mastering what they learned. And there are other kids who may not be, able, there are lots of other kids who can't <laughs> do that, but like, they work hard so that they can actually master what they learned. And so uh, I think mastery, and not, when I say mastery, I don't mean like <laughs> PhD level knowledge, but I mean in order to have a really good understanding of what they have been taught. So um, yeah, that's just kind of my view on what grades should represent. And do you guys, personally, from your experience as students here at LT, think that there is, do you think that grades mean the same thing to your teachers and your peers and whatever? Have, do you think that there's a lot of differences in how people perceive it? No. <laughs> Thanks. There are, because um, sometimes you have students like me who come in and say, okay, I'm going to put a certain amount of work into this because I know that's how much work I need to put in to get by. And then you have students like, I have a friend who considers every test score a competition against the kids in the class. And I think that's the wrong way to look at grades because high scores don't mean anything if they come with a curve or with something. You may get an A because there was a three point curve or because of an extra credit assignment, but if you didn't put the effort in, you really didn't earn it. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank Diane, Hayden, Olivia. Thank, I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time to come down here and outline your positions. Mm -hmm. And if you want to read the articles written by these fine reporters and individuals, you can read it on the Lions website, lionnewspaper.com, or read our print issue on November 30th. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for having Thank us. You.